Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to demonstrate how we can optimize our models using Grid Search CV. In the last video, I used a for loop to optimize the regularization term in my logistic regression model. But in this video, I want to show how we can use Grid Search CV to do this in a much more efficient way and a way that fits the scikit-learn data pipeline. To demonstrate this, we're going to use the diabetes data set. You can see the metadata for that study here. But in short, we're looking to predict the progression of diabetes one year after diagnosis. And this would be done using a number of biometrics, as you can see here. This notebook will be in the GitHub. And so if you want to dig deeper into the study, feel free to look at the notebook. Here are the links to the original data. But in this case, we're going to download it using the scikit-learn data sets low diabetes method. So the modules and libraries we're going to use here are the data set, of course, the model selection, we're going to use Grid Search CV, and then the train test split to separate our initial training data from our validation set, which we will test at the end. And we have a number of other libraries that you commonly see when doing data processing. In the next cell, we have our method where we will build our data set. We will separate all the input data as this X array and then our target variable which would be y in this case this is a regression analysis as we are predicting a quantitative output we are doing our initial train test splits we will hold out 10 percent of the data and we will establish a random state of 1000 so we have reproducibility and we will continue quickly we don't need to worry too much about cleaning this data in this video we see that the parameters have a fairly small skew in this case and the mean of these is near zero so let's establish our baseline parameters for our model. In this case, we're going to use a support vector regression model. So let's set any variable called model that will be equal to SVR. We will pass an initial regularization term if C equal to one. We will fit the model on our training data model.fit x train y train. And this is where the model actually learns the parameters. We will now look at this and track the progression of this model using a scatter plot. So if we plot y equals y train, x equals y train, we will get a straight line across the y equals x diagonal. This would be our best case scenario. In this case, we're going to add another scatter plot where y will be our predicted values. And so this will equal model.predict x train and our x values would be the actual values where x equals y train. We will set the label equal to model one. Let's add an f string for the r squared value. To do that, we will just do this and say model.score x train y train so here with our initial model we have an r squared value of 0 0.19 and we can visually see that this model is not really fitting the linear trend according to our y equals x and so not surprising this is not a great model and so in this video i will demonstrate how we can use grid search cv to optimize this model by finding better parameters for it Let's get started. Grid Search TV is a great way to do this because it is already built in the scikit-learn framework. So we will just do this as we build every other model. We initiate the parameters. You can see that it takes an estimator, which would be our initial model, and it takes a, a param grid. Now the grid is the key to how grid search works. So let's make a new variable called pgrid. And pgrid is a dictionary. And in that dictionary are the arguments for the model. So in this case, we will have arguments for the support vector regression model. So I will copy this. So we have an idea of what the keywords are. And the key is to pass in into our dictionary the keywords into this model. For instance, one of the keywords is the kernel. And we want the grid to look for the optimal kernel parameters. So we have our RBF kernel, but there are other kernels to explore. So let's look at them. 
So if we go further down the documentation, we see we have linear, poly, RBF, and sigmoid. So let's look at them here and just pass it into a list. And so if we were to run this now and pass in param grid equals p grid, and then our cross validation equals five, it would run five fold cross validation on each of these, output the R squared value and whichever parameter gives you the highest R squared value would be the best results or the best conditions. And that will be what will be used for, for future predictions. But we wanna look at more. One of the other terms that could be interesting would be degree. And so let's pass in a range, mp.a range, and let's pass in one through six. So this would give us degree one through five, which is particularly important for the polynomial fit. And we can continue. So let's also look at one more parameter for this regularization term. This is one that's pretty important for this model. We will set that equal to mp.log space as we've done in previous videos. Check that out in the description. And into log space, we'll pass in negative three to three and we will have seven steps. So let me show you what this looks like. You see, we go from one e to negative three all the way to one e to the three. Here we will pass in each of these and we will sort this out. So there's several parameters that it will search in a combinatorial fashion. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll save this as grid. And if we look at the grid here, we see that we have our grid search CV. Inside that we have this parameter grid and it will now iterate through each of these and perform five-fold cross-validation on our model. So to actually fit the grid, we will use grid.fit. It will pass our X-train data and our Y-train, and we'll run this as we typically do. Now you'll notice that this will take a while because we are passing in multiple parameters and doing a multi-fold cross-validation. There are ways to speed that up and I'll demonstrate that in a future video. So if you want to be notified, subscribe to the channel. So now let's look at where we are. We run, because we did grid search, there are a few extra attributes that we can take advantage of. So we can run grid.cv results, cross-validation results. And we'll get a dictionary of all the metadata associated with this cross-validation. The best way to visualize this is just to convert that dictionary into a data frame. I'm wrapping this with the data frame constructor. And you see we have a large table of parameters. I don't necessarily care about the fit time and mean score time. And so I'm going to use .iloc to look at all the rows and starting with column, let's say five, let's see where that is to the end. Okay. And so here we see our parameters that we are exploring. We have our degree, we have our kernel. Let's set this to four and we have our C parameter. You can see that now we are iteratively looping through all the Cs and then all the degrees and then each kernel. And so this ran 140 experiments and then performed five vote cross validation of each of these combinations. And we will get a rank score as well as the mean test score of each of these and the associated standard deviation. But you don't have to look at these yourself. There is a way to get the best results. So you can run grid dot best estimator. And you can see that it is a C value of 10, a degree of one with a sigmoid kernel. We can also get the best score. So in our cross validation, our best score was 0.47. We can get a hint at that by if we were to go back up to the top and run sort values and we sort on the rank test score column you see that the, the lowest rank is this parameter. We have C of 10, a degree of four, three, two, and one. These are all tied, which makes sense because the degree would not really affect the sigmoid. And we have this set of, of mean test scores with a pretty reasonable standard deviation as well. And so we can get at that data and you can see how quickly we've run through a lot of different parameters. And so let's plot this and see what we've got. So let's just copy this down our original figure and add one more to the bottom of this. 
So now let's switch this model to grid. And so now we're going to run grid.predict x train. Y train will be our actual values. And then instead of model one, we'll just pass in grid one and grid.score. So here we are going to produce the same output and we can see how much better this model does. So visually we can see that we've made significant improvements in our model by using this grid search and optimizing multiple parameters in the model where we originally had the orange trace, which was relatively flat with an R squared value of 0.19. We now have an R squared value of 0.47 just by tuning these parameters. So one of the great things about grid search TV is that we can apply this to many other models. There actually might be some that are better suited for this type of data, such as random forest or a partially squared regression. And so I'll maybe challenge you to try to figure out if you could find a better model framework that would do a better job or tune for a wider parameter space using grid search CV and see if you can improve on this model. The notebook will be in the GitHub. So if you want to be notified when that video comes out, subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.